Before you take the medication, I'm going to ask you just two questions again. Sure. Do you have the right to change your mind? My mind's not changing. And what will this medication do? It will kill me and make me happy. Connecticut law states that it is illegal to intentionally cause or aid another person in suicide. It is a felony punishable by imprisonment of up to 10 years, a fine of up to $10,000, or both. Should Connecticut follow Oregon's example and legalize physician-assisted suicide, otherwise known as PAS? Two major stakeholders in this issue are the patient and the judicial arm of the Connecticut government that sets the law. What is the law's impact, and what are the various views of these stakeholders? Patients that support PAS believe they should have the right to choose the time and place of their impending death. Despite what many believe, pain is not the number one reason these patients choose PAS. At the end stages of their lives, many patients are heavily sedated on a number of drugs. However, many terminally ill patients do express concern about their worsening condition and the implications that it will have on their quality of life. In the end, one of the primary reasons for patients choosing PAS is their desire to leave the hospital and die in the familiarity of their homes surrounded by their families. Further, patients cite the desire to have control over their own destiny to be a definitive factor in their decision-making process. But providing patients the freedom to choose when they die could be a slippery slope, ending in a social policy of involuntary euthanasia. Those who argue against PAS for the patient contends that abuses of the law are likely, and legalization of PAS will corrupt medicine and its practitioners. They further argue that it will allow patients to give up too easily, rather than seeking alternative end-of-life options. If these other options are not explored, improvement in palliative and terminal care will cease. Lastly, many are opposed because of religious views. Another stakeholder in this debate is the judicial arm of the Connecticut government. Just as with the patients, there are both positive and negative aspects to Connecticut's current law regarding PAS. The argument to make provisions to the law legalizing PAS can be supported by the 14th Amendment, which states that no person shall be deprived of the right to life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Giving this right to the individual allows them to exercise their freedom of choice and have a dignified death, a death that is free of pain, surrounded by those of their choosing while maintaining their privacy. However, from the other angle, Alexander Capron argues in his article, Death and the Courts, since PAS is currently illegal, focus is where it should be, on improving palliative care. If PAS is legalized, the courts will then have to devote a significant amount of time to cases aiming to reverse the law, thereby distracting away from the care of terminally ill patients. PAS continues to be an emotional and challenging question for society due to ethical, legal, moral, and medical controversies. As future nurses, we should have an awareness of our own view on PAS and also be sensitive to other perspectives. More importantly, we should never forget that it is our role as nurses to advocate for the choices of patients and their families.